Does math give you anxiety? Does it give you stress? Does it give you uh, crazy nerves and it's like the worst thing in the world? It actually does for, for a lot of people. So you are not alone, okay? So think of me as your math doctor because I am going to go over the causes of math anxiety, the symptoms of math anxiety, and then finally the cures, what you need to do to get over the math anxiety that you have. Welcome to Purely Persistent, I'm Michelle. So first we have the causes, and there are three main causes of math anxiety. The first is other people, okay? So maybe your parents, maybe your teachers, maybe your friends, okay? They have instilled in your brain that you don't like math. Okay, maybe when you were a kid, you were struggling with something and your parent or a family member said to you, oh, it's okay, I was never good at math either, right? Getting told that at such a young age actually ingrains it in your head and it's really hard to overcome. I like to think of the analogy of a brick wall. So right now, you might have a brick wall when it comes to math in your brain. Okay, so the first time they told you, it's okay, it's fine, I was never good at math, you put up a brick. And then you were struggling with a math concept, you put up another brick. And over and over, all these negative thoughts with math just kept putting up these bricks. And now you have a brick wall. You have like a solid brick wall. And the success in math is on the other side. And you're right here. And so it's really, you feel like it's really hard to get over that brick wall. This math anxiety is horrible, right? Because you have built up such a brick wall. So shame on those people for telling you, it's okay, I didn't like math either, right? Because that's essentially one of the causes of why you have math anxiety. Another reason, fear of embarrassment. Remember in grade school when they're like, hey, what is six times seven? And you gave the wrong answer, right? You just get that, that like intense fear, right? And this is fear that maybe it's from a long time ago. Uh, six times seven is 42, by the way. That's one of those tricky, tricky ones right, right in the middle there. But if you don't know the answer to a math problem, sometimes it is embarrassing. And especially, especially in school, that can make people be very anxious and maybe not like math because of the embarrassment that it potentially causes. The third cause is going to be the stress of a test, okay? So if you have these other two things going on and you don't really care for math, the stress of a test makes you not like math even more. Okay, so let's go over a few of the symptoms of math anxiety. So first, panic and stress, right? Uh, I want you to just think about the brain for a second. If you've watched uh, other of my videos, you've definitely heard me talk about the different levels of the brain. So hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already so that you get other great nuggets of information. But so basically how the brain works is you have three parts of the brain. There's the inner part, which is going to be your basic functions, right? We need food, shelter, uh, reproduction, just basic human functions. Oftentimes it's called the reptilian brain. The next part of the brain is going to be the part of your brain that has the emotions, okay? And that's exactly where math anxiety falls. You're stressed about math, right? It's right in the middle part of your brain. But then we have the outer part of your brain, which is going to be where all your smarts are, right? You know the math, you do. You, you can do well on the math test, but you're not able to reach the outer part of your brain because you're stuck in that inner part, that middle part, right? You're stuck in the emotions of, 
oh my gosh, this uh, this math test, I'm, I'm really nervous and I'm scared and I'm stressed. So you're not able to actually reach the outer part of your brain that has the knowledge of of the math skills, or maybe you're not even able to learn the math skills because you are so stressed and so fearful. Another symptom is nervousness during the test. A lot of people get nervous, but math anxiety is an even more intense nervousness of failing, failing the test and maybe you're snowballing it on if I fail this, then I'm going to fail that and this and this and this and my life is ruined, right? I used to do that. It's horrible. Try not to do that. Next, a fixed mindset. So basically a fixed mindset is either we're smart or we're not, or I can't do this. There's no way I can do this. My brain doesn't, doesn't grow. My brain doesn't work like that. That is a fixed mindset. And a lot of people have a fixed mindset when it comes to math. Uh, we'll go over in the cures of what you can do about that. Okay, next we have lack of confidence, right? That kind of goes with the fear of embarrassment, but a lack of confidence when it comes to math. I'm, I'm just not, I'm not so good at math, right? Maybe, maybe you say that to yourself. Maybe you lack the confidence that you need in math. So if you've watched a lot of my videos, you'll see that at the very end, I always mention how you need to believe in yourself, right? I'm trying to build up your confidence in math, in whatever you're doing. You've got to have confidence when it comes to taking a test. You've got to have confidence when it comes to math. And the final symptom is when you start sharing your math anxiety with others okay so your parents or your teacher uh, said to you you know it's okay i'm not good at math right when you start passing that on to other people when you say to your kids it's okay i'm not good at math if you say to others oh you know fractions you don't need them you're fine right causing the lack of confidence or math anxiety in others by sharing your insecurities. So now for the cures. So math itself is, I like to think about it like a house, okay? So you have to have the foundation of your house before you can build the walls and the roof and that sort of thing. If you don't have a foundation, the house will collapse, it will, it will just fall. And so sometimes with math, you need to go back to the basics, okay? You need to learn your addition and subtraction. Maybe you need to learn fractions or multiplication. Before you can learn algebra, you need to make sure that you have the basics done before you can learn geometry. Again, you need to know the basics. So maybe wherever you're at, step back a little bit, learn those basics so that you can more efficiently learn the more complex math problems. Another cure, positive reinforcement. Okay, so that means yourself and you know, hopefully others, your teachers or whomever. So if you did a math problem or maybe you did a whole page and you got it right, celebrate right be excited that you did this you know way to go michelle pat yourself on the back you did it you caught this math problem you know be proud of yourself and then having that little uh, euphoria that excitement in your brain will help you be more successful with other math problems in the future next growth mindset so we just talked about what fixed mindset was. Growth mindset is really believing that your brain has the power to grow, okay? Even though you may have struggled with math in the past, it doesn't mean that that's how you're going to be for the rest of your life, right? You can keep growing, your, your brain can keep growing. It, I mean, that is how our brains are. It's called neuroplasticity. Uh, Give this video here a thumbs up if you'd like more on the brain. It's actually, uh, 
really interesting. And if you know about the brain, then you can understand studying a little bit better and, and just really essentially being more efficient. So growing your brain and believing that you can do this, right? I may have failed in the past, but I know that with hard work, I can do this. And praise yourself and praise others for their efforts, not for necessarily getting it right. Okay, so if you work hard and you keep practicing, you'll get better, right? Ascent, it's with anything in life, right? If you wanna run a marathon, if you wanna have a YouTube channel, right? You just have to be consistent. If you wanna be more proficient in math and not have your math anxiety, you need to just practice. The more math you practice, the better you're going to get. But sometimes you might need tutoring. Okay, that's what YouTube is for. I have several videos on math, on different math topics that can help you. So if you want actually more videos on math, leave a comment below and tell me what math videos you would like. Okay, but maybe you need a little bit more tutoring. So go on YouTube and see what sort of tutoring is there. Maybe your school actually has free tutoring as well. So uh, see what your tutoring options are. Okay, if you can make math relevant and fun. Okay, I just actually taught a math class where we were talking about ratios. So uh, look at this little video here on math and ratios and Rice Krispie Treats. Now, as far as the ingredients go, it is all about the ratio, the proportion. So that was only a little snippet, but isn't that fun? Make math fun. Make math relevant to your life. So instead of being like, oh, I'm never going to need this, right? How could you use this? How can you make it relevant to your life? Uh, I actually love word problems more than just regular plain math because of the relevancy, right? You know, it's a fun little problem. Think about math problems as kind of a fun little adventure, right? It's sort of a shift in your brain. Speaking of shifts, you need to reframe your anxiety. So I used to have a lot of just general test anxiety and I reframed it. Okay. So instead of being nervous about a test, if you have studied hard and you have practiced these math problems, think about a test that you're going to take, not as, oh my gosh, I'm about to take a math test. Uh, but think about it as I have worked so hard this past month or this past week or however long you've been studying. That this is just, it's kind of the, kind of a celebration, right? Whenever we accomplish something big, like maybe a graduation or a birthday, we celebrate, right? You have completed another year of your life. Let's have a party, right? So think about it like this. You have completed another week of your math. You have learned this chapter of your math. Let's have a party and show us all that you've learned with this test. So if you can get yourself hyped up and pumped up, you will be more efficient and just a little more excited. And that will reduce the anxiety. It will get you out of that middle part of the brain and help you reach the outer part of your brain that has all the smarts. So I hope that this little diagnostic math doctor tutorial with the causes, the symptoms, and the cures helps you, okay? Because I don't want you to have math anxiety. I don't. And you, you don't want it either, right? You know how miserable it is. And you, you don't deserve it. And if you can change your brain to not have the anxiety, then, then you won't. So check out my other math videos and make sure that you believe in yourself. Believe in yourself with math, believe in yourself with the other subjects that you have. Because I know that if you work really hard and you're efficient, that you will do really well on the math problems, on the math test. I believe in you. Make sure that you believe in yourself too. Peace guys.